always a happy time when we've got New York Times best-selling author Neil Pazricha in the house with us here on City Line. Thank you very much. Helping us navigate some of the things we go through in life. And if uh, folks out there are anything like me, what I hear a lot is I'm hearing the word anxiety, I'm hearing the word depression more than ever mm -hmm. these days. Yeah. Um, and we're hearing it from our friends, we're hearing it from our colleagues. Yep. So what we're going to talk about today is how do you react? What do you do to help a friend or a colleague, someone close in your life that is dealing with anxiety or depression? Yeah, exactly, Trace. And you know what? Here's the thing. You make up a good point because we're hearing it more and more in society, but most people are like, well, go see a doctor. Mm. You know, go talk to your, your therapist. And they're missing an opportunity, I think, to be the middleman and, and sort of in between the friend that's in pain and the medical professional. And that's a conversation that's tougher to have, but it's one that I'd love to share with you today. So first of all, yes. couple stats, just to start off the bat. Uh, according to the National Institute of Mental Health, one in five of us suffers from some form of mental illness, okay? okay. Another stat that's quite troubling is that um, suicide is the, is the number one cause of death, 25% of deaths for people from age of 15 to 24. That's 25% of deaths are suicide from age 15 to 24. So it's like, it's, it's growing, it's a huge issue. We have, we have to talk about it, whether yes. we want to or not, whether we're comfortable or not, we are surrounded by people or we are people that are going through a lot of things. Okay? I like that you're, you're mentioning though that we need to be the advocates, even yeah. though a lot of us would feel like, well, I'm not prepared, I don't have, a, I don't have a medical license, I can't help you, you can help. Well, you can help a friend. And you know why? Not only can you help a friend, Tracy, you actually need to because 50%, this is my last stat, yeah. but 50% of all people who suffer from mental illness will never see a healthcare professional ever. Mm. Half of them. And you know this if they're your, your mothers or your sisters or your brothers. You're like, just try getting to him to a doctor or her to a doctor. It's not going to happen. So whether you like it or not, you are on the front lines. Yes. And so the thing I want to share today are three simple words that can help when friends tell you they are anxious or depressed. Okay. okay? So those three words are simply, tell me more. Tell me more. I honestly think they're the most powerful three words in the English language. When you say tell me more, you mm -hmm. actually allow someone to start processing their own difficult to process thoughts. They start, uh, you know, working through it a little bit. And if you can say tell me more, you help further the conversation. But I want to be, I want to be wary because saying those three words isn't as easy as it sounds. Okay. It sounds like, oh, I just. I just say, tell me more to my coworker who's crying at my desk. No, it's not just that. Right. You have to have the time to say that, and you have to have the emotional energy. For most of us, including myself, I will instinctively try to help them or chime in with my own problems, and yet I'm stressed too. But if you have time and the energy to simply quietly listen and say, tell me more over and over again, then you actually let them process their thoughts slowly, and that's the most helpful thing you can do. Okay. so them actually sorting through their feelings and talking about this as someone who's gone through postpartum depression that was one of the most crucial parts of the process. Yeah. Just being able to tell someone. Exactly. Um, and getting them to react to that, but just basically having that audience where you could share. Yeah. So now you've gotten them to listen mm -hmm. or to talk about what's happening. Yeah, and you've stayed away from judging them. You've stayed away no from offering judging. advice. You've stayed away from saying, well, this happens to me too. You've just let Listened. the cat come out of the bag if, if, you, if you can. Yeah. Now, I want to talk about the healthcare industry because, yeah. because we said at the top of the, we said at the top of the segment like we're we're the we're the we're in the middle of that mm -hmm. but you know what I want to remind the viewers two things and this my wife's a teacher she always tells her students this um, if you are struggling with mental health or mental illness and it feels extreme inside you remember that you can actually call 911 on yourself Mm. People don't know that or they aren't as familiar with that idea, but if you are struggling, you can call 911 yourself and there are fantastic organizations out there to help in times of emergency. Yeah. The one I wanted to highlight today is called Hopeline, yeah. which is 1-800-SUICIDE, where 24 hours a day there's people waiting. So we have that safety net in place, okay? Call 1-800-SUICIDE, use Hopeline services, or even yeah. call 911 yourself. But in between, in this day and age where more people are living alone than ever before, yes. we need the tell me more offerings of those around us. Okay we've got to get in there and help. I like that yep. message on a small scale and on a big scale. You never know how you can help somebody exactly. in that critical moment. Neil, thanks for the advice.